Choices, Regrets, and Parallel Universes. So now that I've summarized Midnight Library, what are we going to do with the other 20 minutes of this video? I'm just kidding. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but let me start it off with a quick intro of what started it all. The Midnight Library by Matthew Haig. It's about a girl, Nora, who is going through a rough season where she, during this, decides to try and end her life. And in this process, she finds her subconscious in this different realm in the form of a library where each book within the library is an alternate universe of had she made a certain decision, this is what the rest of her life would have looked like up to this point. So she's able to choose any book and explore how her life would have unfolded had she made a slightly different choice at a, some point in her life. And being a very sentimental person and <laughs> loving to ruminate on ideas like this, I decided to take this forward and apply it to my own life. So in this very self-indulgent um, thought exercise, I came up with a few paintings that I will walk you through with in this video and explain my thoughts, decisions, actions of why these situations interest me and just reflect on that. Maybe this is something that someone else can relate to. A lot of the topics that come to my mind are not original to me, but yeah, let's get into it. As is customary for most of my projects, I started this off with some gentle brainstorming and through this process came up with five different scenarios. Scenario 1. Homesteader Country Life. Scenario 2. Writer. Scenario 3. Motherhood. Scenario 4. Small Business Owner. And Scenario 5. Full-time Artist. As you can probably tell by these sketches, my mind's eye has a very tenuous grasp on the human form, so I did end up modeling for myself. With varying levels of success, I wonder if you can guess which reference video goes with which topic. Let's get started, shall we? I took two trips to the Boston Public Library this year and suddenly I'm all green lamps and dark academia. But alas, here we are. The first book I have pulled is ironically about books. At some point in my adult life, I decided that to be taken seriously, I must read only serious books with real world applications that would further me in career or maximizing my output. But lately, I have been getting into more fiction and fantasy, and it has been the best reading year of my life. I feel like very, 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 very few things beat letting my imagination just roam wild. When you look up from your book and it's like you're taking your first breath in a, a new world, it's like you just kind of forgot where you are. I feel like that's the best feeling. I've had a love also of stories my entire life. Like my favorite thing growing up was asking my mom like, will you tell me a story just to pass the time? So I guess it's no surprise that as I grew older, I did sometimes Consider the thought of what it would be like to be an author and be able to bring these experiences to people. Like, imagine being able to create something like that for someone else. So magical. So this is the first scenario, a little vignette with just a simple notebook and reference book. Not quite sure what that is, honestly, but I was just trying to capture the vibe. Maybe in some alternate life out there, I am deep into writing some fairy smut. <laughs> or it could be nonfiction, who knows. Actually, two could be true. Let's not limit ourselves here. I'm still not sure if this second one was a pandemic fever dream or a manifestation of my wish to live on a leaf when I was five, but I definitely have some hardcore cottagecore fantasies. I've had some vision of myself in a generally secluded place with a large garden and my cat outside hanging out with me. As much as I love being in a city environment, I could totally see myself out here in the woods in a beautiful garden 
sniffing around with my cat. I know some version of me is out there doing that and I kind of just want to ask her if it was worth it and maybe one day I can. The next topic is probably a bit more sensitive. As an able-bodied female, I have always just had an underlying assumption that I could produce offspring, but I've consistently avoided choosing this path as a means of fulfillment. I avoided the thought that having kids would be my path to the meaning of life. Is the purpose of life to create more of it? My personal conclusion is no, but the decision to or not to can define a lot of your life, most of your life. A few friends in my life have started the journey of parenthood and I expect a few more to come. So it just started getting me thinking, like what would my life be like had I chosen to pop out a few children before this point? With this topic, my mind also wanders to the current state of the world and the projected future. And everything is so uncertain. I mean, it's no different than any other time period. But at this point, I do see having children as almost an optimist journey in some ways. Because once you pop it out, it's going to have to live here in the real world in this unknown future. So I can completely see why people would not choose not to have that in their life. Anyways, here's a painting of me and an imaginary baby that is presumably mine. I have always imagined myself starting a family at some point, but I never really felt in a rush to do so. Not sure how those eggs are doing up in there, but guess we'll find out in a few years. Congratulations, you have now made it to the penultimate dream, a full-time artist. I feel like I've only recently started to think about what my voice is when it comes to my art, like what feelings I want to convey and what my general direction is, like how do I even convey emotions through my paintings, like do I even have something to say, just typical artist stuff. I haven't answered any of these questions, but I think life as a full-time artist is meant to explore these. So in a different life, one in which I didn't have to work a full-time corporate job to support myself as I do now, I do wonder what my life would look like. And I do hope that probably out of all of my dreams, aside from motherhood, that I do get to meet this version of myself. Much of the reason I didn't pursue something creative as a full-time career was probably because of my desperate grasp for security. But now getting older, I am kind of getting the sense that security is mostly an illusion, or not an illusion, but like a perceived notion of the world around you and you can define what security means to you and you can redefine it and likely the definitions that serve you the most are um, pretty much within yourself like true safety and security is having the confidence that whatever is thrown at you you can handle it um, and you can manage yourself and get out of get through it to the other side. So I hope I take my own advice and take a risk one day. <laughs> a brief intermission here to tell you that I found a sixth life I wanted to live after watching Daisy Jones and the Six, even though cigarettes aren't cool. Anyways, this might be cheating a little, but this final role is something I, someone I have already met before. Um, me as a small business owner. A few years ago, I started a flower pressing company that preserved bouquets mostly for weddings. And three years into that, I actually retired because it was a lot of f***ing work. I was in grad school and working a full-time job when I started this side hustle. And it was actually just a pure thrill of launching my website and getting my first customer, um, positioning my offerings that 
to be competitive in the market. Like, I loved it. But after a while, I started settling into a routine and then actually having to execute on the business, like meeting with clients, pressing so many flowers and sending out arrangements, all this communications work. And the reality of what I was dealing with really sank in. And it's almost a monotony that I think getting through is what sets a business apart from other, from, well, makes it a success, gives it even a chance at success, which I realized I was not up for at the time. One of Chelsea Callahan's videos really summarized my feeling at the time perfectly, which was, I'm tired of being ambitious and I was ready to be my deepest, most average self um, to give myself the time and space to pursue and explore creative avenues that I wasn't able to without any free time. But I still did love the feeling of building something that was my own. And sometimes I wonder what would have happened had I continued to pursue flower pressing or maybe started something else on my own. Maybe it's approaching 30, but I've been increasingly sentimental, nostalgic lately. The 20s have really done something to me. Like, it's both broken me in some ways and also built me up. I think it's because when you get to your early 30s, um, you've spent enough time, you've invested enough time in the market, so to speak, to where your choices could have really compounded and taken you somewhere different. Like now you're living the true consequences of the choices you made a few years ago. And that does happen in most phases of life, but I feel like the deviations from your peers exacerbates once you leave a structured environment like school, once you diverge from this forced standardization your paths start to take specific forms and reflecting on these potential divergences was pretty interesting and something i've been doing a lot prior to my next birthday so i hope you all have a wonderful holiday season and i do have a few paintings planned so we'll just see when I find the time to dedicate to them, which will, I will find it. It's just a matter of before or after Christmas. If you made it to the end, you're a real one, and I appreciate the shit out of you. What would I like to see? What different choices or alternate realities of my own life would I like to explore?